Welcome back to another episode of With Whom on Zoom. I'm Hamish Gray from Voice Magazine, and today I'm joined by Raquel Mesker-Zafi, who is a theatre maker turned performance artist, currently working on the newest iteration of her artistic exhibition, A Crash Course in Cloud Spotting. Raquel, it's lovely to have you on the show. How are you feeling today? Thanks, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm feeling good. Um, the shows are starting uh, in a couple of days. So we arrived as a team in Coventry yesterday and we're just landing and I'm having a quiet day before before it all kind of kicks off. Very nice, a nice little brief moment of calm. Yeah. <laughs> um, so for our first question, could you just tell us a bit about yourself and your background? Sure. Um, I trained as a contemporary dancer and I uh, was working as a professional dancer and then had an injury in 2007 that became a chronic pain experience. And um, I tried to keep working in the industry. I did keep working in the industry for a few years after I had surgery. Um, but, but really, I didn't understand at that point how to live a good life with pain. So I kind of um, stepped away from making theatre for a few years and I had a few years that I call my wilderness years when I was really, really trying to figure out how to live well and creatively and artistically with pain. And then in 2016, I started to make shows again and I founded a theatre company um, called Uncharted Collective specifically to create theatrical encounters that um, that explore the lived experience of an invisible disability like chronic pain. Right, okay. And how, how do you feel this new concern with your um, chronic pain has impacted the, the content and the themes of the work you do? Um, yeah, it's, it's been utterly central to the, to the work that I do to it, explore that experience. Um, and as well as not to turn away from the difficulty of that experience, but also to explore the poetry that's possible within um, any extreme experience, like living with chronic pain or chronic fatigue um, or other invisible disabilities or neurodiversity. So, yeah, it's become really central to my work and is um, really everything I'm exploring at the moment is the potential of rest as a kind of poetic intervention. And, um, and as always, trying to centre disabled stories um, and give them airtime, the stories that we kind of don't, don't usually give airtime to. Yeah. Aye, it often goes overlooked, hidden disabilities, it's, you, mm. even in the name. I know it must be a very personal journey, but what advice would you give to young people who either have got a disability that's recently manifested or one they've only recently become aware of what advice would you give them when they're exploring that? Mm. Gosh, that's a really good question, a really big question. Um, I've, I've found that because now I kind of have a community of people that I've met um, who navigate the world differently like me. Um, I call myself a cloud spotter because that tells you something about my horizontal needs and also the fatigue that comes with managing a condition like chronic pain and navigating a world that isn't designed for you with that condition. So I have a community now of people that I've met along the way who we've invited to participate in the project and who communicate their rest live with our audiences. That's a really key part of the project. Um, what's, cu what's interesting or curious is that people really have very different paths. I don't think there is any one one way and I wouldn't really know what to suggest for people other than that um, one common thing seems to be that we can tend to try and run away from an experience like chronic pain or chronic fatigue try and outrun it or pretend it's not happening and most of the people I know who live really well with it and really creatively with it have managed to turn towards their condition and really explore the kind of specific aspects of their condition and then that informs how how they live but um it's funny that you should ask that question because we got approached by Battersea Arts Centre um early this year to run a, a, a course the idea was that people who have um who are kind of uh 
maybe more established in disability arts might have some hacks or tools or wisdom to pass on. So we are literally today just about to announce, put this call out for this um, Cloud Spotters book club that we've created, which will be six sessions um, for people to come together and meet and explore short little texts or tweets or blogs um, that have um, inspired myself and theatre maker Stephanie Kempson, who lives with chronic fatigue syndrome. And we also have a, a counsellor, Oliver Biggs, attached to that project. Um, so that, in a way, is trying to answer that question that you've that you've just asked. Um, but it's it's a pilot, so we're 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 treading tentatively, but but very excited to to, to be doing that. And really, that has come out of this project. Um, I started running something called the Cloud Spotters Cafe once a month for people that are involved in the project, and it's really um, a space to be with other people who get it, where you don't have to explain, you don't have to explain if you turn your camera off or you leave. Um, we kind of have ambitions for the space that are incredibly inclusive. You, lots of people join from bed. Um, and that space has become very quickly a space for um, embodied practice and also poetry. This, this idea of what the hidden aspects are when you move through the world differently um, exploring the poetic aspects of that and that has that that's really behind the whole cloud sporting project and and has informed this new um little course that we're running excellent so like you're saying just having a network is a brilliant way to come to terms with it and that's you're looking to provide a new base for that yeah yeah i guess i am yeah a network um i think it can be hard to find the network that really supports you but when you do um yeah it's a, it's it's a great thing yeah in summary a network you put it very well <laughs> excellent um well thank you very much for that and if, if we just move on to cloud spotting itself could you give us a bit of a description of you know what a crash course in cloud spotting is mm. So it's an installation and performance that tells some of the many stories we've collected about people's attempts to rest in public. So one of the things I do is rest in public so that I can be out in the world more. If I don't rest in public, my world can get very small. Um, and in 2016, I triggered a security alert by lying down on the sixth floor of the Southbank Centre. And since then, I've been collecting stories from, um, from other people like me who navigate the world differently. Um, and those, those stories are at the heart of this piece, alongside people resting in real time and communicating that with our audience. So if I can kind of talk you through the piece, like if you, if you come to I the Herbert it. Art Gallery, yeah. Um, if you come to the Herbert Art Gallery and you come up to the first floor, you'll, you'll come into this room and see this um, kind of floating beautiful installation space kind of at the far end of the room and you'll be invited into that space and you'll see that there are tiny lights tiny led lights all, all, all around this um, circular space and each one of those is connected to somebody who has an invisible disability and who needs to rest throughout the day and when it's on it means they're resting so we've created this app that allows our community who are remote, who are all over the UK and some people in Europe as well, to let our audience know when they're resting. So those acts of rest illuminate the installation and then you're invited to come in and lie down. There are, there are 10 very comfortable places to lie down in the installation. And there is a um, like a 35 minute audio journey, which includes some of the resting stories. And, um, but I think, what it really does really well is it weaves them together in a way that invites you to imagine your city differently. Um, it kind of invites you to, to conjure those stories and place them in your own map of your city. And so hopefully then, that then when you encounter somebody lying down in public, you don't find it strange or weird or think they're drunk or lazy. Um, you've already got this idea that people might be using the city differently um that's a really important part of it but also that we've i guess we're trying to create this bridge between the audience and the participants in real time that um that the lights uh, help us do that yeah <laughs> so it, 
it really isn't just an observational experience. You're really becoming immersed in it. Like you're trying to engage people, reconsider their environment. That's yeah, uh, yeah. Amazing. And the invitation to lie down while we tell you these stories. Um, we always thought it could it would be like a powerful mirror in act, but what we've discovered is that we take in stories very differently when we lie down. It's kind of a different way of spectating and people are much more open to hearing stories. So what, we, what we've what we done um, in a way to, 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 to mirror the, the stories that we're talking about, I feel like has been a discovery for me about storytelling, about the horizontal as a site for storytelling and a different way to create that bridge between the audience and the participants. Great. And then, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's about 250 stories you've you've compiled for this. And but, yeah, nearly 300 now. Oh yeah, I'm exactly. Together. Were you surprised at how quickly it, it snowballed and, and how many testimonies you could find um, talking about these issues that you've experienced? Yeah, I was I was surprised I, when I first um, invited people to share a, a story with me. I thought maybe there's just a few of us. You know, maybe it's just me and a, a few other people, but um, very quickly we discovered that it's many, many people, many people for lots of different reasons um, that that their their bodies need them to lie down and rest throughout the day. So I was I was surprised, but initially surprised, but now I'm not surprised. And now the goal is to gather. I don't know, as many stories as possible. And on Wednesday, we're launching our archive. Um, so you can go on there and read more of the stories than we can tell in this audio journey. And um, you can add your own story to that too. And I should say that there's a part two to the experience. So in the first part, um, I don't want to give too much away, but in the first part, um, you're invited to lie down and the voices will come from pillow speakers. And then, then in the second part, a performer enters the space and we sort of shift into a slightly different mode of theatre and storytelling. Um, but I'm not going to say any more because like, it would just it would give it away. <laughs> the best way to experience it is, is to experience it. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Um, and just in, in terms of like the content, looking at that, so the, the act of lying down, how mm. would you say that is almost subversive to today's society? Yes, yes. I mean, I, I, I think it is. I think rest can be a political act and a resistive act. Um, I mean, I, I can get really on a soapbox about this, Hamish, but... Um, you know, neo neoliberal capitalism wants us to keep working and keep working, and um, and I think rest can be a very creative act. It's it's also becoming something that's central to my practice, and I get my best ideas now when I'm lying down. And I sort of want to say that, and also don't want to, because I don't want it to be co-opted by neoliberalism to kind of go, okay, lie down to be more more creative, or lie down and rest. To you know, to to be able to work more, but I think it's an overlooked space and and an underrated space, and so hopefully this opens the the dialogue for it as as more of a yeah as more of a creative space. Yes, it's really interesting you're talking about the idea of how you don't want it to be co-opted by neoliberalism to be like oh well lie down for productivity. This is very much a resting time. Yes, yes, and and getting to understand what rest means for each of us, because it is different for each of us, but um, I think being able to access that kind of different mode of being and that different sense of time that I think we all know to be true, you know, we've got clock time, but then we've also got uh, nature's time and cycles and seasons and being able to, to drop into that. I think is incredibly helpful and useful and I think it's creative I, I would go as far as says to say it is a creative act in this day and age that just wants you to do 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 mm -hmm. oh, it, it sounds amazing it's sort of like a very genuine way of, of forming expression and um, that's mm. a, a, a rare one I haven't heard before in, in terms of side to say what difficulties do you find and I know you've talked about some earlier how you've been you know, security people talking to you. What difficulties do you find of lying down in public and what public or, or even private infra infrastructure 
would you like to see in place to help people who, who you know need to rest in public yeah yeah I mean I get I do get a lot of kickback I get I get moved on sometimes um people can get very angry I think if you're taking up more space if um, more than the one seat you've paid for on a train, for example. Um, I would like to see rest in spaces in all art galleries and theatres um, and public spaces and libraries. Um, and I would like to see more horizontal events. We did an event yesterday where we lay down in the city centre as a provocation. Uh, we lay down at the Godiva statue and then in the cathedral and then the Herbert Art Gallery. And we issued a challenge to Coventry to be the first restful city in the UK. Um, I learned recently that Coventry is a city of firsts and was the first to proclaim itself um, a city for peace and reconciliation. So we had the mayor and the mayoress come along to that event and we've um, issued myself and Grapevine and Coventry Youth Activists have issued that, that provocation to the city. And um, I mean, I, I, yeah, I would love there to be a rest in spaces network so that you are never more than 10 or 15 minutes from somewhere where you are welcome to rest in your city. Okay. And I've heard, I've heard stories from lots of people who said that there, one, one woman put it really well. She said she's kind of on, she, she, she's kind of got a tether to her home and she can't go very far because she ne she needs to be able to get back in time to rest. So if there were resting spaces in the middle of town, her tether would be so much longer and she would be able to take in so much more of what's going on in her city. Um, I, it's also the opportunity to experience your city differently. Like we lay down at Coventry Cathedral yesterday and the ceiling is beautiful and at the Herbert Art Gallery as well. Um, so it's a provocation, I guess, to not to not be so quick to judge when we see people who present differently in public or people who behave differently in public because we tend to police one another a bit rather than take the time to understand why is this person behaving in this way um and yeah like you mentioned earlier um uh, the, the the first the first thing people think of i think when you see someone lying down in public is that they must be drunk or lazy or in some way misbehaving in some way kind of deviant um rather than just doing something to take care of themselves and to make them more able to be part of their city okay, excellent so well, i guess the sort of the almost tragic thing of hearing about women with the, the tether to her home almost as if the, the impairment comes not from disability but more because the there isn't the social infrastructure in place that could circumvent it in a beneficial way for everyone so it must be frustrating seeing that why is this not implemented yeah exactly exactly it's right it's making it the the if it is a problem that it's all of our problem and that it's it's something for for the city and for the um uh, yeah the businesses and the galleries and theatres in the city to 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 come up with a solution because like you say it's the medical model of disability makes it all about that person to solve the problem but the social model makes it about all of us solving that problem if it is a problem um, of, course. of course there are i'm not negating the difficulty of living with chronic pain or other conditions uh, at all um but definitely definitely we would be enabled hmm. by having things like resting spaces and more creative access because people can think of access as being like okay we tick the bsl box we tick the step free access box but you know what about the things that really make you feel welcome somewhere um what about really thinking about creative access and audio description and like making sure that in the cafe uh the, the, the it's not like this for the counter and you have lower places for wheelchair users it, it's it's a kind of a more evolved kind of design um not and not just design a shift in attitudes because um i've i've experienced it in lots of places that i'm sure have the most beautiful access policies like the welcome trust or you know south bank center but if if those venues um if that doesn't trickle down to the people that you meet face to face then often you, you don't feel welcome in those spaces hi Hi, something you said earlier stuck with me in that regard, just a world not designed for you. And yeah. I suppose that could also be the equivalent of a world designed 
you know, in spite of you, you know, that's indeed. I just, just from a final question, uh, I was just going to ask, how can people, you know, access your current exhibition, uh, Crash Course and Cloud Spotting, and are there any future plans you have that you can tell us about? Um, yeah, sure. A crash course in cloud spotting, you can, I've got a little leaflet here, you can um, go onto the COV 2021 website and book tickets for the installation and for the performance. Um, and this will go on tour next year, we're not, we're not sure where, but our plans um, at the moment are to invite people to share their stories on the archive. Especially, we want loads of stories from Coventry, like we, re we really want Coventry voices in there. Um, and and then next year, who knows? Who knows? Oh, brilliant. It's been lovely having you on the show and just Thank getting you. about this really, you know, beautiful, original artwork, exploring hidden disabilities. So thank you very much for coming on. I very much enjoyed it. Thanks. Thanks so much, Hamish. Thanks for having me. And for those of you at home, I've been Hamish Gray, and this has been another episode of With Whom on Zoom. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.